Hi, it's Dr. Eric Balkavich for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. Today we want to talk about why it seems that women have more hypothyroid symptoms and more autoimmunity issues, especially Hashimoto's. Is it by chance or is there some science behind this? And what the research is starting to show is that women definitely do have a greater propensity to developing hypothyroid symptoms and autoimmune thyroid issues. And so one of the big things that's being talked about in the literature is something called leptin. Women have a tendency to have a higher level of circulating leptin. And the reason for that is as, as young girls move into puberty and estrogen levels rise, leptin has a tendency to rise with estrogen. So women carry more estrogen, therefore they carry higher levels of leptin than men do. So what's the big deal? Well, leptin creates a chronic low-grade inflammatory response. And so that means women are walking around with just a chronic state of low-grade inflammation. Is that a problem? Well, yeah, it can be because inflammation triggers a couple things. And low-grade may be not such a big deal, but when you add the inflammation from other factors in life, it really can become a bigger deal. Inflammation will decrease thyroid hormone transport into the peripheral cells of the body. That means away from essentially the brain and the thyroid gland. And so when you decrease uh, thyroid tr transport to the peripheral tissues, the same time we're increasing thyroid transport to the pituitary gland. So what happens? So when this is occurring, if you have decreased thyroid hormone to the peripheral tissues, you'll have all the symptoms of low thyroid function or, low, or hypothyroidism, constipation, fatigue, tiredness, weight gain, dry skin, hair thinning. You'll have all of those symptoms. The problem is, is that we've decreased thyroid hormone to the peripheral cells so we get symptoms, but at the same time, thyroid hormone transport to the pituitary becomes upregulated in inflammatory states. And so the pituitary gland becomes saturated with T3, and the saturation of T3 causes the TSH levels to stay normal or actually go low towards like a more hyperthyroid state. So you'll go to your primary care or the endocrinologist, pretty sure you have a hypothyroid condition based on what you read on the internet, and they'll run a TSH, pan, a TSH test, and that's usually all that's run, and your TSH will be normal or low, and they'll say you don't have a thyroid issue, your, your symptoms are caused probably by something else. You're eating too much, you're not exercising enough, you're not sleeping enough, you're stressed out. You, there's multiple excuses that you'll be given, but this is probably what's really going on. This low-grade inflammation also is unique to the thyroid gland because the thyroid gland's got a kind of a different immune system there. It's way more sen sensitive to the inflammatory response. And so inflammation in the thyroid creates more cell damage. The increased cell damage drives more inflammation and it, the process just kind of keeps feeding on itself. And eventually the immune system of the thyroid gland loses what's called self tolerance. It loses its ability to determine outside antigens or problematic tissue from good healthy tissue. And the, and the immune system starts creating immune attack against thyroglobulin and thyroid peroxidase antibodies in the situation with Hashimoto's and maybe even uh, start to attack thyroid receptors, thyroid stimulating hormone receptors as associated with Graves' disease. So all of this stuff starts to occur and that's what drives increased autoimmunity or increased susceptible to autoimmunity. And if autoimmunity is going to occur, the thyroid gland is, is thought to be one of the most sensitive tissues, if not the most sensitive tissue, to autoimmunity based on its unique immune system. It also sets this stage for increased susceptibility to molecular mimicry, meaning other things that look very similar to the, to the immune system, to the thyroid tissue that it's attacking, can also increase the autoimmune response. Things like yeast and bacteria and gluten and environmental toxins all can exacerbate this whole situation. So the number one, one of the number one reasons why women have a tendency to develop more hypothyroid symptoms, more autoimmune attack on their thyroid, is the result of leptin. And what, the number one thing we said that can drive leptin levels up that differentiates it from, from men to women is estrogen levels. But there's some other things that can drive up leptin as well. A diet high in carbohydrates 
can drive up leptin levels as well. And that's men or women, but women are gonna be at a greater disadvantage. Decrease physical activity, because if you decrease your physical activity, there's a lesser need for excess carbohydrates, excess sugar, so more of those glucose molecules are gonna get stored as fat, which means you're gonna drive more leptin. Stress of any type, physical, chemical, emotional, microbial, can increase uh, cortisol, which can increase inflammation, which can increase leptin, and drive this whole scenario. And lastly, there's a whole bunch more things that can, uh, can drive leptin levels to go up. I don't think we need to get into it. You just need to know that there is a reason why more women have hypothyroid symptoms, have more hypothyroid conditions, and develop more autoimmune thyroid conditions. Next time, I'll probably talk to you about what you can do naturally to lower your leptin levels. All right, hope that helps. If you have any questions, put it in the comment area below or give the office a call if you have any questions, okay? Have a great day.